Okay, here uh, is the latest video. Uh, I cleaned all that out, regraded that, put a little gravel down temporarily. Joey the painter is working on caulking the uh, tractor shed, I'm getting ready to paint. Uh, the grading is done and the seeding is uh, done. I'm gonna do some watering. Turns out there's a little bit of a depression in the center and I have some standing water when I really run the sprinklers for a long time and it turns into soup and quicksand so I'm a little concerned about that. I either have to regrade that down into the woods which is lower than that uh, or just fill it in and uh, the grade isn't perfect here. There's a little addition there but uh, I have to work around that. So I ran the landscape rock on the tractor kind of cleaned up the driveway back here. I kind of have to do that from time to time as I'm working back here. But the location for the tower has changed. Originally, it was going to be on the back side of the uh, shed here. And it was going to be right on this corner here, four feet by four foot by four foot. And it's freestanding, so it doesn't have to be attached and be way up there. But my neighbor came over from my old house and we were discussing that. And he said, boy, Steve, that's a lot of work because you're going to have to have that backhoe back and forth here into the woods as you're digging that hole out and traipsing back through that new grass and swamp and peat moss and all that. And just to have to regrade all of that when you're done and find the original grade. He says, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty close. And it would be a shame to have to go regrade this area back into the, the mouth of the woods. And I says, well, what are the options? And he looked at it and says, well, if he were to come and put it on the long side, the back side of the long side of the shed, right here, four feet by four feet by four feet, that would keep you out of the back side. And the only thing you'd be doing is be sacrificing a smaller area to be disrupted and tore up with the backhoe. So basically just this area here which is pretty firm. There's no real water standing there like there was behind there and in the center. And when you go to dig it, I could just hug this side of the shed with the backhoe. And actually every scoop I take, I could just back up a little bit, swing over and just dump the dirt in this driveway where it's good and firm, where I could scoop it up out of the way. And uh, the other real advantage is it's less of a distance for the concrete truck. And that's kind of what I'm worried about. When it was around the backside, the concrete truck would conceivably have to back in here and have a wheel in this area. And this is really soft and soggy because of the watering and I disrupted the soil. I'm not sure I have the grade right. Plus, if the grass starts to come up, uh, I don't want him sinking into that. So, whereas if I had the base or the foundation in the back corner here, let me back up some. It's only 16 feet from this road and... He can bring that concrete truck, just hug this corner, come around, and stop here. And usually have a long chute that would get right into that hole. So worst case, he'll have a back tire right in here, which is pretty firm. So that's the idea. For the winch pole, we would use one tree in the back, way in the back there. Probably up 20 feet. Have a snatch block pulley. Hit uh, 25 feet on the mid-span of that tower. And it would tilt down towards the house we did some measurements and it's actually 60 feet to the end of that eave by the front porch there and we even first marked it on the side of the shed here so at this point here it's 60 feet two and a half two and a quarter inches you'd be in funny there but from the center of this two foot or four foot so basically two feet in or so 60 feet and I only need 50 feet for the tower plus probably 5 feet for the mast. And 10 is 3, so 8 round out to 10. That's where you get 60 feet. So I got ample distance, 60 feet. It'll hinge down and land right in front of that area there. But it'll have to be up 6 feet off the ground because the antenna is 12 feet diameter. So it'll be 6 feet off the ground. I will have to trim this tree, this uh, vine maple here, because it's going to want to come down and snag that so I'll have to take one of these branches off I don't think I'll have to take the whole tree just these two branches that are kind of angling out on the, what's going to be the front yard so that's what we have I scraped out all this area here cleaned all these ferns and bullshit out of there it looks so much better there with the firewood but the firewood is temporary 
uh, roses are going to actually go there. So I was uh, cleaned out this. The, the painter guy wants all this cleared out for paint, so I had a bunch of cottonwood, firewood there. Moved it over there temporarily. We'll find another home when it's done. Uh, let's see what else I do here. Ran a landscape rake on a tractor. I got to do that every now and then to kind of clean all this up here from the debris. It worked really well. Uh, see, we changed up the service road here a little bit. The sun's getting in my eyes, but now the service road uh, goes to the left side of the trees, right to the right of the cones. So that this can all be garden. This will be raspberries here and garden from here to the fence and forward. Uh, before, I thought the service road was going to be here. And by service road, I mean a little access path to get the tractor and vehicles, car or truck, all the way around the yard. It's going to be grass and into the tractor barn. So you go down here, the Yellow Brook Road, full of wood chips, bang a left at that fence, come around and go right in front of where Joey the Painter is and go in that, that shed. That way you're off the grass. But now it's going to be over here so we sacrificed some of the yard it didn't need to have this that much grass grass was originally going to go all the way out to there and that's a lot that's kind of disproportionate so i cut in there gonna have less grass and just kind of have a curve here so and then uh maybe some other edging over here and uh like i said the raspberries and trees and garden and all that crap over here a tree go over up there where the challenger is and figure out what to do with the road for surface either wood chips or gravel or a mix of both and clean this up real nice and uh, move forward so this is the area that uh, we wanted to avoid bringing the tractor over right in here so if i were to keep there i would have to bring the tractor back and forth and really tear up that area there so uh we're gonna think about that see if i run into any other obstacles but right now it seems like the position is gonna be right on the corner there on the left so wish me luck